Hey guys, how you doing? Today we're back out in the garden and I'm going to attempt to make a bushcraft box saw. A box saw is a really cool piece of kit that I think every bushcrafter in the world should have, namely because it just makes processing firewood and, and cutting wood in general so much easier. And while you can just buy them, like there's a company called Adventure Swan who make absolutely beautiful box saws out of uh, maple wood and things like that, um, not to put too fine a point on it, I can't afford one at the moment, but also I've seen loads of videos of bushcrafters making their own frames out of, out of um, normal bits of tree. So I thought it would be quite cool just to, uh, to have an attempt at that today. So come along with me, I hope you enjoy it. Just very quickly for anyone out there that doesn't actually know what a box saw looks like, it has a blade like this that's really sort of thin and flexible uh, and the frame is made up of an H shape. So it's got two big uh, sort of sticks popping up at the top and then a cross piece uh, along the middle. The idea is that at the top of the H, uh, between the two sticks, you loop some paracord and then you actually intertwine another stick into that which eventually tensions against the crossbar of the H. That way the bottom of the, the bottom of the saw where the blade is actually being held is really nice and tight uh, and it means the uh, blade itself doesn't bend. Uh, that means it's actually really good for cutting wood. I hope that kind of makes sense. Um, if it doesn't and I've explained that really badly, don't worry, you'll get the idea as we go on. But what I'm going to be doing today is creating that frame out of um, <clears throat> A few bits of wood that I managed to salvage from a tree that was cut down in my uh, in my garden uh, two two days ago. Um, I, got, I got the tree surgeon to keep a load of the branches rather than take them away, um, and I'm going to use them to, to make the frame. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to have to cut some of these sticks down to size to get my side pieces and my crossbar. I hope that makes sense. As I say, hopefully you'll pick it up as we go along. So I've got some rudimentary tools with me. I'm going to try and keep it kind of simple and almost bushcrafty. I appreciate that we're not like in the woods or anything like that, but all I've got with me is my Baco Laplander folding saw. I've got my bushcraft black. Uh, I've got a little Mora hatchet, which I don't know if I'm going to need. Uh, I've got some power cord in this bag. So with that, with all just those tools, we should hopefully be able to create um, a bushcraft box saw. Uh, as with loads of the stuff that I've been doing on my channel recently, I've never done this before, so this will be my first attempt. Um, so if I muck it up, uh, as I said before, you know, don't judge me. We'll see. Alright, so the sticks that I want for the vertical part of my age frame um, need to be, it may seem obvious, but they need to be as straight as possible. Um, and in terms of length, I'm thinking probably about four of my hand. So if I do one, two, three, four, maybe a little bit more, that should be all right there. So I'm just going to mark that with my knife. We'll see, don't I? And then we'll just chop that bit off. Alright, first one done. Now obviously I want to make sure that the opposing part is exactly the same size. So if I line that up. It's not drastically straight actually, so let's see if we can find a straighter piece. There we go, it actually curves in slightly the same way, which is quite nice. So I'll make a mark there, where that one is, and then hopefully when I cut them they'll be the same size. Same size, nice. So these are going to form the vertical part of my H, and now I need the cross piece. So 
So eventually, my saw is going to kind of look something like this. So you see what I mean by the H shape? And then what we'll do is we'll put paracord across this bit here with another little stick entwined into it, which I'm going to use this for, I'm going to cut it down. And then what this will do is this stick here will, once it's entwined in the paracord, will rest against this cross piece so that it pulls the whole thing together so that it's nice and stable. So that's the general idea anyway. So the saw blade that I've got is uh, 22 inches long. Um, it's just, uh, it's a relatively cheap one from Amazon. It's not like a backhoe or anything like that, unfortunately. <laughs> it's just from Amazon that cost me a couple of quid. But the importance um, of it being 22 inches long is, of course, our cross piece needs to be the same width, uh, or at least the same length, so that it will uh, ill tension and, more importantly, fit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring these vertical bits in a bit to where they're going to be uh, when the whole thing is put together, and then I'll mark my cross piece so I know where to cut it. So I'm going to put my vertical piece where it will eventually rest on the saw, which is kind of there. The reason for this is eventually I'm going to put a small um, kind of stopper piece of wood through this hole here to tension against it. So it's important to set it up like this so you know exactly how long to make the cross piece. So I've done it on this side, so I'll do it on the other side. Sorry about knocking the camera. I'll do it on the other side and then I'll put my cross piece in and then we'll mark it up and uh, we'll get cutting. The other thing to bear in mind when we're doing this is when we're laying the axe, uh, the axe, when we're laying the saw out, I need to make sure that these pieces on the side are kind of as straight as possible throughout this so that we don't muck up the um, dimensions if we can avoid it. I wonder if that's, have I got a better, straighter piece? That one work better. The trick to all of this is trying to find the straightest piece of wood you can. Maybe that's. Maybe that's a better cross piece. Okay, we'll use this as a cross piece. So I'm going to mark underneath, kind of there. Oh, that didn't go well. <laughs> there and there. Now the wood that I'm using is is very green. Um, namely because, as I said at the start, it came from a tree that we, uh, we just cut down a couple of days ago. I don't know if that's going to make a massive difference when it comes to making my saw. I'm hoping not, but you never know. If it does, then, you know, who cares? We'll go and find a dead tree at some point. But yeah, okay. So I've marked that out, so I'm now going to cut these down to size, um, and then hopefully it will fit. I'm now going to mark my vertical stick where the middle of my cross piece goes. The reason for this is what we're actually going to do is carve a notch into both uprights, um, which this will then fit into. Because the other thing that we're going to do is taper the ends of these to form a to form a point, so that they fit nicely in the uh, uprights. Again, hopefully that makes sense, but I'll. It'll become clear if it's uh, if it's not once we get, once we start doing it. Cross piece itself is now finished. I don't know if I've carved these thin enough at the ends. I'm hoping I have, but I'm not entirely certain. But we'll just we'll see how we go anyway. Um, the next thing I need to do now is to carve a groove in both of my uprights for the pointy bit of the crossbar to actually fix into, so that it rests nicely against the wood uh, and won't go anywhere once it's all tensioned up. So let's have a go at that, shall we? So I marked out where the cross piece needs to go. So what I will do now is start to carve. I'm going to do this as carefully as I can. Which is a little bit awkward when I'm on this table, but there we go. Now, 
from what I've seen and read, it's more the depth. From what I've seen and read, the depth of the little groove here is more important than the width necessarily. So I'm going to spend a little bit of time carefully carving these both out. With the cross piece complete, the next thing I need to do is cut some slits into the bottom of my vertical pieces so that the saw blade itself can fit in. Um, thinking about it, I maybe I should have done that first. I don't know. Anyway, uh, who cares, we're learning. So all I'm going to do is grab my backhoe Laplander and as I said, cut a small groove um, into the vertical bits from the bottom. It doesn't need to be massively long, just enough to kind of fit the blade in as you might expect. So let's do that, shall we? I need to make sure that I'm doing this the right way. So if I do that, it needs to be in about the middle. I say about the middle, it needs to be in the middle. Let's mark a line there. You could just use your knife for this and batten it, I think, but because I want to keep this one for a little while, I'll use the saw so it's a little bit cleaner. That one. That's going to be that way around. So it needs to be there. I might do. Start it off with my knife. Just give it a whack so that I uh, definitely have the line right, I think. For that, I need a slightly more stable. There we go. That's actually split the wood slightly, which is kind of cool. And then fit in there. Yes. Lovely. Alright, <clears throat> maybe that's an easy way of doing it. Let's do that with the other side as well. There's that. Alright, we're getting there. We're getting there. One thing I did discover um, with the green wood is because I use my knife to uh, to split a bit of the wood to get the saw blade in, um, it actually closed up really quickly and I couldn't quite get the um, the saw back in the one side so I had to use my knife again and tried battening again and what it actually ended up doing was splitting a fresh groove uh, inside the actual piece of wood which made life very very difficult um, but I've managed to fix it. <sighs> I would imagine if I was using a piece of dead wood for the frame rather than green wood then that wouldn't have happened so there's a lesson learned for the future that dead wood is probably a better material to use. <clears throat> anyway, what I'm now going to do is carve uh, some little tiny sticks just to go through the holes on each end of the blade uh, so that it, um, uh, the wood has something to tension against. Um, and then I'm going to put the paracord on the top and do the twisty bit for the, for the middle to actually start tensioning up our, our saw. And then we'll, uh, we'll give it a go. So, uh, I need small sticks to go through the hole. And for that, I have this. Bonus. I'm just going to trim these bits off so they don't look quite as horrible. Right, stopper pieces are in, so what's next? The only thing that we have to do left... The only thing that we have to do left? The only thing that we need to do now is get some paracord, put a, a loop in here, and then get our tensioning stick in. So I've got paracord in here. Uh, I've no idea what type of paracord this is, whether it's a certain weave or anything like that, but this is one that I happen to have in my bag, so I'm going to use this. Um, I'm going to use this one because it's got quite a cool colour. It's the only reason. Uh, right. <coughs> just going to 
going to measure it out roughly. Nothing overly strenuous, he says, massively failing to do so. Come on, mate. There we go. Think that'll do him all right. Where's my knife? So let's put that bit away. <clears throat> What I will do in a minute is um, get a lighter and just burn the tops of these so they um, sink in a bit more. Just tying a really simple overhand knot just to tie the two pieces of paracord together. That's not going to go anywhere. And then wrap her around the top of the saw like that. And then we get our tensioning stick, just pop that in there and then just start twisting like this. So as you can see the paracord starts to tension up and then you tension it apparently as much as you possibly can. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to take this off the table for a second and move the camera so we've got a bit more room to work with. Hopefully nothing's going to snap. Mm, so mine's leaning slightly, I'm not sure why. So you can tighten it up some more, see if that makes a difference. Okay, I can still keep going. I wonder if that's because of the grooves that I've cut. Hmm. <clears throat> Get over there. Yeah, mine doesn't actually feel all that stable. That's a shame. Let's see if we can keep going tight-wise. Yeah, this isn't going to work, is it? Look. Oh, there we go. Ah, well, that did not work. <laughs> oh, well. <clears throat> Interesting. Makes for better content, I suppose. What happened there, then? Oh, no. Epic fail. Right. I wonder if it was because of the cross piece. Let's do... We're not giving up. Let's try a different cross piece. Um, see if we can find a straighter one, perhaps. We may have to start entirely again. Who knows? <laughs> oh, I'll get back to you in a minute. I don't feel like this is working. <clears throat> Tell you what. Let's put this aside for one second before I get too frustrated. And I'm going to... Go find some dead wood instead and see if that makes any difference. Because I did say at the start, didn't I, that I'm not sure if green wood's the right thing to be using. So let me go find some dead wood um, and we'll try again. Okay, I found some dead wood, so I'm going to do the entire process again. Um, I won't make you watch it because you've seen the basics of, of how to do it. Um, I'll get back to you once I'm back in the position that we were in last time where the last saw failed. So when we are tensioning the power uh, power cord, tensioning the power cord, uh, wish me luck. Okay, my wonderful viewers. <laughs> Attempt number two. Not entirely convinced. Still rather skeptical this is going to work. But let's have a go again. <laughs> Please work. Please work. Please work. Move the paracord down a bit. I don't know if that will make any difference. Oh, it still looks a bit dodgy. <coughs> uh, right.
convinced. Feels like it wants to go to one side again. Yeah, it does. I can already see it. Damn. Okay. <clears throat> Not giving up. Maybe if I deepen the carving on this side, maybe that will make a difference. Okay. Back in a minute. Didn't mean to threaten the camera with a knife then, by the way. Okay, we're back. One more time. If this doesn't work, I think I'm just going to quit and try again on a different day. Um, but what I've done is I have uh, deepened the grooves on both sides of the verticals. I have tapered out the uh, cross piece a bit more. And I've actually tied the paracord at the top slightly differently and further up uh, on each of the verticals. So hopefully, fingers crossed, that may make a difference. I don't know. But here we go. Please work. Please work. Seem to be holding firm. Bring that over if I can. Can I get one more? Please don't break, please don't break, please don't break, please don't break. Please don't break, please don't break. Oh. I think that's probably about as tight as I'm going to get it. It's a little bit unstable, but it hasn't snapped apart in my hands, so that's a positive. So, maybe we're working? I'll tell you what, let's get a piece of wood and very carefully see if we can use the saw. Oh, there is one more thing that I'm supposed to do, uh, which I've seen Joe Robinette do when he makes these, which is to tie a bit of extra paracord around these bits of the saw um, to stop the wood splitting any further. So I'm just gonna do that quickly, I think, and then we'll have a go and see if See if it actually cuts. Woo. Well, it does kind of work. So very, very dodgy and it is completely and utterly about to collapse. So um, I'm going to take it back over there and I'll show you the damage that we've just done. So at first glance, the saw doesn't look to be in too bad shape, but <laughs> I mean, like, look, this side seems okay. But if we then come across to this side, we have issues. So my cross piece is coming out of the wood, so it's not straight at all, which is unfortunate. And also, if you look here, look what's happened to the bottom of my blade. So I'm imagining, and I don't know for certain, but I'm imagining it's got something to do with me not um, carving out this, this piece of wood, not carving out the groove for my cross piece well enough or straight enough or something like that. So when I tensioned it up, it started to twist. Um, a case in point, my saw blade is now at, a, at an angle, which has obviously drastically, drastically reduced its integrity. So um, I'm gonna have to buy a new saw blade, but that's okay. As a very first attempt, I don't think we did too badly. I mean, obviously we have broken a saw blade, so maybe we didn't do all that well, but <laughs> this is a bit of a cool learning experience and I've, uh, I've had fun. Oh, <clears throat> well, there we have it folks. My attempt to make a buck saw. Uh, could have gone worse, I think. Could have gone an awful lot better if I knew what I was doing. Um, maybe we wouldn't have broken a saw blade, <laughs> but never mind. I'm definitely going to have a go at this again. I really enjoyed doing it. I really enjoyed the process. Uh, and I've learned quite a lot in terms of the kind of woods to use uh, and seeing the mistakes that I've made. So knowing about the grooves now and stuff and, and where the splits are in the wood and all that kind of stuff. Um, so I'm definitely going to have another go at some point in time once I get um, a new blade. But there we go. So I mean, in the end, we could argue it was a success because we did manage to cut this piece of lock off. So I'm counting it as a very small win. Well, thank you very much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, as always, 
if you like this kind of thing, please feel free to, uh, to comment, share it, subscribe, all that stuff. Uh, and I shall see you in the next video. Stay safe. Turns out that despite what I thought, my saw blade is in fact not broken. I thought it was. Apparently these things are ridiculously bendy, which is very, very cool. So I can have another go at this in the very near future. Um, and actually maybe <laughs> bring some kind of measuring equipment and actually try and make sure that I do it properly. But cool, yeah, anyway, stay safe.